Hey guys, Super Silverstone here. Today we're going to be taking a look at tags when looking at data packs. Now, there are two different types of tags. The tags we'll be going over today are tags to make groups. What these do is put a bunch of data into one giant if statement and then run if anything on the inside of it is true. You'll notice the theme between all of these as we go through them today. We're going to be looking at the block tag, the item tag, the biome tag, and the entity type tag. So here is a quick example. You can see these are all of the things we're testing for. We're testing if there's oak sapling, spruce, birch, jungle, acacia, dark oak, or mangrove propagule. All right? That's what we're testing for. And we're looking inside of random sets of data what it actually is and if there's anything important to us. Here we can see dark oak, oak sapling, so this would be ran as true. It would not tell us specifically what, but it would be ran as true. And you're going to see that type of thing throughout all of these today, about how there's different sets of data put together in different ways. One more important thing before we begin, to check for a tag file path, you have to use the hashtag. So you'll see this as we go through, again, you'll see it, we have to use the hashtag, because rather than just for normal blocks or other types of simple data, this checks specifically for tags. This distinguishes normal content from tagged custom content. Right? So, let's get started with block tags. To begin, let's start with the block tag. What this does is it combines any blocks that you want into one if statement, and then if it's true or not, it'll run. Let's make an example. Let's say I want to detect if the ground I'm standing on is dirt. However, what if we wanted to detect if the ground was any kind of dirt, like podzol, rooted dirt, or grass blocks? So let's look into that. These can be ran for when testing for block arguments with a hashtag and then a resource location. So first, we're going to make a data pack. We can do this by creating a new folder. We can name this whatever we would like. I'm going to call this folder new data pack tag, right? And then on the inside, oh, why is it so small? There we go. On the inside, we're going to create our new folder and we're going to name this data. And then next to it, we're going to create our pack dot and then MC meta, just like that. And then in our pack.mc meta, we're going to make our file right here. Uh, I have this actually pulled up so I can just copy and paste it because I don't want to type it out. So here we go. We can see I'm using 10 in this case because it's currently for 1.19 and it's pre-releases. There's a link in the description to a misho.github uh, IO generator and it has all of the latest versions and everything. So I recommend calling your namespace folder something to do with tag. I'm going to call mine tag testing just like this, and then I'm also going to create a Minecraft folder, but we're going to be using that one for later. Inside of tag testing, we're going to create, um, uh, hang on one second, we're going to create, inside of tag testing, we're going to create a new folder, and we're going to call this tags, and then on the inside of tags, we're going to create a new folder called blocks. This is where these are going to be stored at, and what these use is these use uh, specific files called .json files, and these files are going to be helpful to us when making our data pack. So that's actually what we're going to do to make this, is we're going to jump inside of VS Code. I'll be right back. So we are now inside Visual Studio Code, and what we're going to do is we're inside of our blocks folder. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new file. Um, I recommend naming it your namespace and then your block types that you're actually checking for. So in this case, I want to name it tag testing dot dirt type, because we're looking for dirt in this case, and then dot .json on the end, just like that. Now, it will give you an error at the start, but that's okay. Remember, it must be a dot .json file. On the inside, we'll start and we'll open up a set of curly brackets, because that's always what you're going to do, and inside, and then in quotes, in here, we're going to use values. You can see it already sets it up for me. And then on the inside of here, this is where we're going to add all of our values. In this case, if we wanted to do dirt, I would do podzol, and then on the outside, put comma, and quotes, and then here we'll do dirt, and then here we'll do like grass underscore block, coarse dirt, mycelium, rooted dirt, and then do mud. Now these aren't actually in here fully yet, but they are here. They just aren't on my uh, checker. And then we'll also do like, uh, I think there's one I'm missing. Yeah, there is one I'm missing, but so you see how we did that. Uh, I didn't really go over it very well, actually. I wish I did a better job at explaining it. But what we're doing here is we're opening up a set of values. And we have a set of different values that we're taking. In this case, there's names of different blocks. And we're going to run to see if any of these are true. So that's it's one giant if statement. Tag testing, tags, and blocks. 
and then here we have our tag testing dot dirt type dot json right it wasn't explained very well um but that's for blocks the rest of them are a lot easier to explain now that we have the core concept so let's check out what it looks like in game so in game here we can see we have our block tag and then here we have a command block so execute as super silverstone at super silverstone so this is checking at our location if the block below us below our feet because our feet is where your blocks are registered so this is the ground hashtag tag testing colon tag testing dot dead dirt this is what i named it instead of type dirt i named it dead dirt so you can see here we have a hashtag this hashtag is here to distinguish uh any type of tag groups you can see these are all minecraft tag groups and any type of coal ores any type of copper ores any type of dirt any type of uh, enderman can hold any type of flower pots any types of goats can spawn on they're used a lot to test things right and then if this is true, we're going to run, say, block tag passed. So here we go. We'll stand on red wool. It does not work. But if we stand on grass block, it works. If we stand on podzel, it works. If we run on mud, it works. But if we stand on, you know, red wool, it doesn't work. And this is because it's running directly into our statement to see if it works or not. Right? Simple. So next, what we're going to be making is an item tag. So to make an item tag, we'll create a new folder inside of the tags folder. In this case, we'll create a folder named items. So let's go back into VS Code. So here we can see tag testing, we have tags, blocks, but in this tags folder, we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call it items, just like that. So now we have two folders on the inside. Items can be used when testing for item arguments and commands or for recipes and advancements. We are, however, going to be sticking with recipes for this video. So for our example, let's say we want any combination of terracotta to make red terracotta. In regular Minecraft, you can only use regular terracotta to craft. And if we want to make it where you can mix and match what terracotta you can use. So... Inside of the items folder, we'll create a file named whatever, but I recommend the namespace following what's inside. So in my case, it'll be tag testing dot red, or I want to det red terracotta dot json. This is done the same way the blocks are done. So we start with an open set of curly brackets, and then on the inside, we open a set of quotes, and we have values, and then on the inside here, we can put anything we want. So we have red underscore so here what we would do is we would put all types of terracotta now i'm not going to go through every type of terracotta because that's a lot but what this does is it allows us to go through and check for any type of block so what this will do is i'll show you guys right now what this will do but it will detect each spot on the crafting grid and it'll tell you what it is so the more challenging part is adding it to a recipe which we're going to quickly do now so what we're going to do is we're going to head inside of the tag testing tags folder just like that so what we're going to do is we're to quickly add this to a recipe uh, because that's what you're going to usually use it for you're not going to use it for much else but you can what we're going to do is we're going to go inside of the tag testing folder and then next to the tags we're going to add a folder called recipes not a file we're going to create a folder named res r e c i p e s and that's going to go next to tags right so inside of well actually we're going to throw it in there there we go now inside of the recipes folder we're going to create a new file and i'm going to call mine terracotta.red.json you can call yours whatever you would like what we're going to do is we're going to start off by opening a set of curly brackets and then we're going to open up a type and then this we're going to do minecraft colon crafting shape because we want a specific shape to our crafting and then in here we're going to do pattern and then this is actually the pattern that we're going to follow so we're going to do uh in quotes Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag. On the outside, we're going to do quotes. Uh, hashtag, uh, we'll do our hashtag. On the outside, and then we'll do hashtag. We'll do quotes. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag. Just like that. And on the outside, we're going to do uh, just like that. And then we're going to run a key. So this is actually going to tell us what we want to do. And then in this key, we're going to do quotes. Hashtag, just like that. Colon on the outside. And then open up another set of curly brackets. Now this hashtag, what we want it to be set to, is you can set it here. You would set it to a hashtag to be equal to terracotta or hashtag be equal to die. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to run a tag. And in this tag, we can put tag testing colon tag testing dot uh, detect red terracotta. So that's actually how you're going to do that. Just like that. And then you're going to put a comma right there. And then you're going to run it again with more quotes. And then we're going to put R. And we're going to set R equal to... Um, quotes and then we're gonna do an item because and we want this to be red uh underscore we're actually we're gonna do minecraft colon red underscore die just like that and then we need one more thing which is the result so we're gonna go on the outside and we're gonna get the result minecraft item we want this to be equal 
to Minecraft colon red underscore terracotta. And then we want to set account. And we're going to give eight. So boom, you're done. That's how you do it. It's a little bit longer of a process. But right here, this is the point where you need to know. Where you set a hashtag and you're going to set it to a tag rather than an item. So this will mean it will detect if anything in that tag is set to it. So it's basically saying if like eight different blocks or a hundred different blocks or whatever are there. So that's really cool how you do that. And we're done with that. So let's view in game. So we're back in game. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to test this out just in the crafting grid. So what we can do is we can mix and match. And you can see when we put a red die, it will work. It will give us our red terracotta because in, in the normal game, you can't one, you can't mix and match terracottas on the crafting grid. This would not work. But two, you can't even use any other ones besides regular terracotta. This is the only valid option for making it. So that's really cool. So that is item tags done. So let's move on to biome tags. Next up, we have what is called a biome tag. Biome tags require one extra folder, however. So under the tags, we're going to add a folder called world gen. So this is for anything world generation will go in here. And then on the inside, we're going to add a folder called biome, right? Just like that. And inside of here is where your biome tag will be held. In this example, we will be detecting if we're in an ocean. However, there are loads of ocean biomes. That's where this tag would come in. I recommend calling it your namespace. So my namespace is tag testing dot what you're actually detecting. So mine would be debt ocean dot json, right? And then this is done the same exact way uh, the other ones are done. So we're going to open up a set of curly brackets, and then we're going to open set um, a set of quotes, and that's our values. And on the inside, we're going to do um, biomes. So here what we can see is there are hashtags you can put inside of hashtags. There are tags you can put inside of tags. That's really cool. But then you can also see all of these biomes on the list. There's tons of them. So we would want any of these ocean biomes. There is already a Minecraft hashtag is ocean. Uh, so we're just going to use that. Um, but this is just a hypothetical. Minecraft has already gone in and done most of the work for you. So you can already detect any type of ocean with the hashtag is ocean. They've already done all that work for you. Uh, but let's actually test it in game now. So here we have our biome tag. I'm just going to do that just in case. <laughs> so here we can locate biome hashtag tag testing. So this is detecting one of ours. Tag testing dot debt ocean. So, so we actually have to go to it. Yeah. So here what we can do is we can run the command. And it will give us the nearest location that this is at. Now you can also do uh, slash execute if uh, block here is uh, like hashtag. Actually, I don't think you could run if block here, but you can run uh, the position. And you can detect if the position is there actually. So that's how you do that. However, I want to go back. I don't know where home is. I did this for a re... Okay, so that is biome tags. The last one we're going to look at is entity type tags. So in this tag, you can change groupings of mobs and what groups they fall into. In this case, I want to change which mobs the axolotl will be hostile to. Do this inside of your tag folder. You're going to create a new folder named entity types. So let's jump over to the editor. Now this one is special here because we're actually going to be changing a default feature of Minecraft. And that is changing the, what the axolotl will do. So this isn't actually adding anything new. This is changing what's already there. So we're actually going to go into the Minecraft folder. And we're going to add in a folder called tags. And on the inside of this, we're going to add in a folder, folder, uh, there we go, folder. We're going to call it entity underscore type, right? And since this is a default vanilla thing, we have to actually get the file name right. So this, so this file is axolotl underscore hunt underscore targets dot JSON. I'll leave tons of links in the description on where you can find all this stuff. I have the default file here. What you do is you actually open it up, and then inside you have your values, and then these are all of the mobs that they are hostile toward to. So, uh, obviously, what we would do is we would open up quotes, and we would put Minecraft colon uh, ad, ad, ax, axolotl, so they're um, aggressive toward each other, because I think that would be really funny to have an axolotl war. Uh, yeah, because I'm comedy, right? So let's go check this out in-game and see what this actually does. And this one will run no matter what, because it's an entity type tag. So let's go check this out. This is going to be really funny if this works. So since we're changing the vanilla uh, gameplay, what we're going to do is we're going to get an axolotl, and we're going to get two of them. Are they aggressive? Maybe not on land. Let's check out in water. Let's see, are they aggressive? Yes! Look, they're all eating each other. They're all eating each other. <laughs> no! No! They're killing the babies. And then they're all playing dead. And they're dying. Oh! This is great. Look, they're all killing each other. 
<laughs> this is amazing. Oh my gosh. This is actually great. <laughs> oh, this is great. And they're not like mean towards any other mob. They're only mean toward other axolotls. <laughs> this is great. They're mean towards their babies. They're mean. <laughs> oh, this is wonderful. Oh, this is great. Man, that's wonderful. Oh, goodness. So, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, hit the bell, turn on those notifications, and go down to the comments and leave a comment. I really appreciate you guys helping me out with this. We're at 500 subscribers, uh, almost. Maybe not yet. Uh, we're really close, though, if we're not there already. Uh, so, thank you guys so much for watching. Next time, we will be looking into, and we, I will be redoing everything for crafting. So, an updated guide to crafting, because, as you can see, I was very proficient in crafting just then like five seconds ago from well not five seconds ago a few minutes ago when we did the crafting with the recipes i was really proficient in that so we're going to be redoing that and i'm going to go over all of it step by step by step it might be a lot longer of an episode though it might be like closer to an hour long because crafting is incredibly large it's very 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 large so we'll be going over all of that in the next video Thank you guys so much for watching. Oh, and then after that, I think we have advancements. So look out for that because advancements is one that's kind. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye, everybody.